Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham Show. You know, there's this thing that everybody talks about that we need to be doing in our businesses in order to attract clients, but it's something that oftentimes people are afraid of doing or they're intimidated by, or they just simply hesitate because they aren't sure where to begin. And that thing is video creation, whether it's going live or it is just creating video content to publish. It often is a hangup for people. Well, today we're gonna talk to Scott Wilhite and he is an award-winning videographer, filmmaker, very well-known in the industry. And he's going to educate us on how we can avoid mistakes related to creating video and then step into confidence to create more video for our businesses. Now on the show, we talk a lot about not being on social media and how you can grow a successful business without social media. Social media is not the only place where video comes into play. I'm going to give you a list of other things, other places that you can use video, such as Pinterest, on your blogs, your, in your email marketing, on LinkedIn, in your memberships, if you have a membership vault, and when you're doing masterclass. So being on camera, even if you're not on social media, is still imperative to growing your business. All right. Without further ado, Scott Willite, welcome to The Robin Graham Show. Hey, thanks, Robin. Hey, I just want to chime in just a little bit on what you were saying about using other than just social media using video. I believe that you can use video. And especially if you are a heart centered, mission driven entrepreneur, I think video is just the perfect way to grow your business. And you can use it in every step of the sales cycle. One of my favorite things is to use it for like video voicemails when I'm reaching out to new people who haven't met me before. And the amazing thing about video is people can look in your eyes they can hear the sincerity of your voice and when you show up as you you're authentic and you're making that connection and you can do that better with video than any other way mm -hmm. i agree and something you just said there is the voice hearing the voice when people hear the sincerity of your voice so even in um, direct messaging if you are on social media or even on linkedin Using the voice messaging feature is also a huge bonus because they can hear that sincerity in your voice and they realize you're not just a bot or somebody who is just selling to sell. Okay, Scott, that was a great point. Thank you so much for that. Will you tell the listeners a little bit about you and how you got to this point in your journey? <laughs> okay. Uh, so, well, boy, that, that's such a long and windy story. And I guess the, the key with windy is... The, the road to entrepreneurship is not a direct road. It's not a go from A to B. It's like this, you know, this zigzaggy, crazy journey. And that's what my journey has been. Uh, I remember, boy, it's been nine years now that I jumped off of my corporate job and jumped into the world of entrepreneurship. And I took my my entire 401k savings and I threw it into three films that I was sure was going to launch my new business. And uh, anyway, they turned out to be beautiful, but they didn't launch my business the way that I thought. And also my business has taken all these twists and turns. Um, anyway, it's been a, a, a challenging and remarkable journey going through all of that. And I wanted to share some things that I learned along the journey that hopefully will help you to, to I don't know if it really shortcuts the process, but um, helps you avoid some of the pitfalls that I found. So for me, I found that there are five big mistakes that entrepreneurs often make with film or video. And, uh, and that's, first of all, that they will spend so much time or energy making this perfect or stunning video. You know, like I mentioned, I took my whole 401k savings, threw it into these three films, and they didn't work like I wanted them to. And because it was such a huge endeavor, because it was such a huge expense, and because to me it was such a public failure, I spent a lot of time nursing my wounds and hiding in a corner and being so uh, embarrassed about um, the fact that it didn't work the way I wanted it to. So what I want to share with you, uh, I'm going to share you know, some principles that hopefully will help you avoid that. Um, another another mistake that entrepreneurs often make in their videos is that they will follow a one and done strategy. You know, like my example is, is I had these three films, but this one 
push, this one endeavor I thought was going to make it. And uh, and when you do that, you're kind of in a make it or break it situation. And with entrepreneurship, there's so much learning, there's so much pivoting that you need to be able to do. So if you throw all your money, all your energy into the that, that one and done strategy, that's a really risky way of doing it. Uh, one other um, problem, one other mistake that entrepreneurs often make is waiting until they can afford it. Okay, you know, and uh, and and often it's because they're imagining this really big, beautiful, amazing film or something that they're going to create or series. Uh, the other one is hiring a video crew. <laughs> now, I, it feels a little weird to say that because I hire video crews all the time and they are my friends and I want to give them jobs and employment. Um, and I want you to be able to hire a video crew. But that, again, is adding extra risk, extra load to you. And there are other ways for you to ease on in, build up momentum, build up an audience, uh, find your voice. And uh, and so I'm going to share principles on how to do that. And then the um, the last of the five is that often entrepreneurs will overproduce and overstress about their videos. And when they do that, they become very stiff. Uh, it becomes shallow. It becomes anyway. It's just not relatable. People can't, you know, can't really connect with you. And that is not what they want. Uh, they're not looking for perfection. They don't find perfection in themselves. They want something that is relatable. They want somebody that they could look at and say, "Hey, she's just like me," or "He's just like me," and it feel that that connection and that humanness really comes by making mistakes and being real and being you. So, so those are the five mistakes that I see happen over and over and over again when entrepreneurs are using video to grow their business. Okay, Does that make so sense you said for you, so Robin? Oh yeah, it makes total sense. And you said so many things just then between your intro and then all the five things that I want to reflect back for just a minute. But you know, I, I can tell a story when I first started doing video, I was so afraid and I felt like it had to be perfect. And yeah. I mapped out scripts and every time I mapped out a script, then I'd mess up and I'd have to start over or I would be reading the script. But it, what I learned from that, and I, and I think when you talk about spending so much time to make it perfect, this is a great example of that because we can spend so much time to make it perfect, but then we lose sight of our message and who we are. So if you can, instead of thinking you have to follow a script and have it be perfect, that you have to say every little thing, take that approach that oh, I can take a deep breath and I can just walk into this and speak from my heart, especially if you are, like Scott said, a heart centered or a mission driven entrepreneur. The reality is when you speak from about something you're passionate about, or when you speak from your heart, it's going to just flow. And if you forget a bullet point, make another video to include that video or to include that bullet point. It's not that big of a deal because your audience, like Scott said, wants to see you're human. They want to build a connection with you. And if you're stiff and not relaxed and too perfect, they're not going to want to connect with you because you're going to intimidate them. So I just wanted to give you that, that grace to walk into this as Scott tells us some tips and things that we can do to create video. Give yourself that grace to let perfectionism slide and just approach it as this is a way to connect, build my community, build relationships and build trust. Because at the end of the day, that's what's going to determine whether or not they buy from you. Okay, Scott, I kind of rambled, but I have one question for you. Um, yeah. The one and done strategy that you, you mentioned. So when it comes to creating video, so my guess is that you're saying they spend so much time trying to create this video, they do it one time and they're like, well, that really didn't get a reaction, so I'm not going to do it again. Is that what you were referring to? Uh, it is, uh, but it's also, it's just putting all this time and energy and effort into making just the absolute best, most perfect video that is totally going to launch you. And and believing that that, you know, just in entrepreneurship, like it's, it's figuring out what your audience wants. It's figuring out what they need. Um, it's communicating with them. And you really, like I mentioned kind of at the beginning of the podcast, you can use video in all, in every step of the sales cycle. And and so if you were to put all of it into just one aspect, maybe it's just in the finding or the nurturing or something like that, 
um, it doesn't make for a balanced approach to reaching your audience. So you really want to be able to figure out how can you be nimble? How can you quickly and easily create video and lots of video so that people get a chance to interact with you in in various ways and really get to get to feel you, get to understand your heart and your soul and really connect with you. Does that make sense to you? Makes total sense. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So let's dive into the tips and strategies that you have to help the listeners create better video. Okay. And just before I jump into that, um, I wanted to uh, bring up one more point that you had mentioned. Um, and it was really about being you and being authentic and being real. And this is this doesn't have to do with video, but this shows kind of the different pivots that I've done along the way. At one point, I was teaching happiness skills. Uh, I'd written a book and Anyway, I had a business around this and I was interested in content marketing. I heard that's a great way to grow your business, which was blogging at the time. And so I would spend hours and hours and hours each week creating a new blog post article and I would send it out. And, and it just absolutely had to be perfect because I'm a writer and I needed to make sure it was scripted just right and everything. And I remember one night realizing, oh my goodness, um, my article is due today. And and anyway, I ended up writing this article on the fly, it took me like 15 minutes, and it was about this basketball game that I had just been involved with, and this kind of quirky, weird thing where like it would like we knew we were going to lose. And so we decided to just have fun with it. And so we went, um, we took, we had a friend that had, he was a country music singer. And so he had a, had a, had a big van, not a van, um, a bus. He had this big bus. And so we took the bus to the place where we were going to play basketball. Anyway, we just made it fun. And because we were so relaxed and having fun, we ended up winning the game by like a remarkable, <laughs> anyway, like it's a bunch of old guys, you know, like it's not a, a glory road or, or any amazing story, but I put that article together in like 15 minutes. And then a couple of months later, I was at a conference with these people that I had been nurturing along the way. And all of them were coming up to me and talking about that article. And I was like, you're kidding me. Like that is the one that I spent the least amount of time in. And that is the one that connected with people the most. So I want you to take that, that idea, that principle and and I want to share with you what I call the live video system or the live videos. Um, uh, you know, Framework? it's just kind of live video principles that you can use so that you can create a ton of content easily with low risk uh, and uh, and be able to do that and not not break the bank and be able to connect with your audience. So um, I use an acronym, acronym L-I-V-E. Now, first of all, this does not have to be live video. You don't have to be broadcasting it immediately. Um, but if you use the principles, then you can create tons of content. Like right now, Robin and I are creating live video, basically. Uh, we're not broadcasting it immediately, but we press start and then <laughs> and record and we do our thing. There's no editing in there. And when we're done, we have a video or an audio podcast, actually both. Uh, so that is, that's part of it. So first of all, we'll go into L. Um, L stands for low risk. And what risk is, is risk is irreversible negative outcomes. So if you look back to the three films I did, by the way, you, you might want to check them out because they're beautiful. Uh, one of them is called Falling Up. It's the true story of Meg Johnson. She was running around a Red Rock country She accidentally jumped off a 40-foot cliff, became paralyzed, and it is her remarkable story of coming back to life and happiness. Um, but because I had sunk my entire 401k savings into it, there was a lot of risk in that. And when it didn't work out the way I wanted it to, um, like there was the emotional baggage that came with that too. I was, you know, I was cowering, I was hiding, I was embarrassed, I was ashamed. Risk is irreversible negative outcomes. So whatever you can do to lower your risk, the more chances you're going to have to be able to create lots of videos. So L is you want to have low risk. I stands for instant. Now, instant, you know, again, like I mentioned, Robin and I are recording this right now, but we're not broadcasting it, but we're recording like it is instant. It is, as we're talking, there's no editing, there's no post-production time. It is conversational. It is full of mistakes. It is full of errors, um, but it it 
anyway, it's fast. Uh, the, the next thing is V. V is says for valuable. You want to be able to create valuable content. Whatever you do, you want to be benefiting your people's lives. You know, you want to make their lives better, easier, uh, remove obstacles for them. Uh, think about them and everything that you do. You are creating content for them to make their lives better. So everything really needs to be valuable. And then E is everyday life. You know, invite viewers into your everyday life. Be real, be you, be genuine. And the more authentic you can be, and I know that's a buzzword and it, it gets overused and everything, but the more you can just be you, the more you're going to connect with people um, because they're going to see themselves in you and your stories. And when they see themselves, that's when the connection happens. And that that's when they realize, wow, they have something that can really help me. Does that make sense to you, Robin? Oh um, <laughs> my gosh. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very simple. Um, you know, we do talk a lot about providing value and sometimes it's a matter of, okay, I'm, I'm going to embrace who I am today. My hair is not done. I don't have makeup on. I'm in my workout clothes, whatever, but you think of this brilliant thought, it can't wait. So you just get on the video and then that lets people see, okay, she's providing value she's her authentic self. This is her everyday life. So now I like her even more. I respect her even more because she's just who she is, but yet she gave me this incredible piece of brilliance that I can apply in my business to help me grow or my life to help me grow. So absolutely hands down, this was, this was great. Such a simple yet very powerful tool. So now that we have this Scott and we're, we're not going to go too in depth, but do you have just a few tips like lighting or equipment or anything like that, that people need? I mean, I use my phone most of the time or zoom. Mm -hmm. So for me, I, I don't have fancy equipment. I have a ring light and that's it. So do you have any other suggestions or recommendations? Yeah, that could actually be a rabbit hole to go down when you get into equipment and lighting and everything. I actually did a course, um, <laughs> uh, I don't know, I guess it was last year, teaching people to record a profitable course using just their iPhone. I mean, they could use their Android and stuff too, but I show, I help them get through the mental blocks that were making them get into perfectionism and things. And uh, anyway, I showed them how easy you could do it. I sold it for like a hundred bucks. I remember this one lady had been just paralyzed with fear. She had bought all this equipment. She had three cameras and she was trying to them and everything. She bought my course. She had some amazing valuable content that her people wanted she put it together and in a month she had sold um was it 72 something like that anyway she had made seven thousand dollars she turned her hundred dollar investment into and then she sold her course for a hundred dollars used just her iphone didn't do the editing you know just use kind of the live video principles just using her iphone uh like i mentioned uh got seven thousand dollars back just in the first month from doing that so the simpler um the better especially when you're starting out as you get into it more than you want you know you'll find out that uh improving your audio is the very first thing you want to do and then lighting and camera and other things like that but the first thing is to just do it just get used to doing it get used to hearing your own voice i know often that is like a killer for people is that they just kind of freak out about you know, how they sound, uh, but just get used to creating content and being able to do it quickly and easily. Like I say, push button easy. You push record and you're off and running. So do you have any apps that you recommend? Because for the, like for the iPhone or whatever, is there an app that you recommend for editing? Uh, well, again, when you get into editing that, that takes you down a rabbit hole of a bunch of time. Yeah, you want to be able to use press start and then press end when you're done and just keep it as simple as possible. But there is a service that I'm a big fan of. It's called Video Ask. If you go to videoask.com uh, to get into that, you can use your phone, uh, you can use your computer, your laptop, whatever. Um, but it has, it's an online recording service. And what's cool about it is it records, it. it'll do a countdown for you, five, four, three, two, one, then you're on. And then when you're done, you just press stop and it records it and will give you a URL. 
So you can take that URL and email it out or save the video or whatever you want to do. So like I mentioned, when I'm reaching out with influencers and I want to connect with them, they've never met me before. I will often do a video ask, uh, you know, a, a big hello kind of thing to them. They get to meet me. They get to see me. Uh, I send the, the link out to them. It comes with a GIF. And so they can kind of see me before they click the link, you know, if they're nervous to do that. But that's a great way to just simplify the process for you. So that's called videoask.com. And there's a lot of other uh, programs out there like that. But just, you know, make it as simple as possible. Take out that risk, low risk, make it instant, make, you know, your content valuable, and then just be you with your everyday life. I love that. And then let me ask you one more question, just in case the listeners might have it. But when you talk about housing your videos, mm -hmm. do you house them on like Vimeo or I think it's Vimeo or YouTube, or do you have a platform like that that you use to house your videos so people can always go back and watch them? Or do you have something separate? Yeah, I actually use both. I use Vimeo for my professional videos and also my courses. It's an easy way for me to keep it like it has a higher video quality to it, um, but also it's easy for me to make updates and changes to it. And so like, anyway, that's the the beauty with video is you don't like how you do it, have, how you did it, you know send it out, but then take time and, and record it again. So Vimeo is great for that. But then I use YouTube for uh, more general content. And on YouTube, you can have hidden links in there too. So I've used course, I've used it to create course material as well there. But that one, um, I can't replace the video, I just have to do a new video and then find where I've sent that link out. So that can be a little bit problematic. And then also YouTube, We'll try and um, get people off um, to looking at other videos. And, you know, <laughs> with our squirrel, you know, kind of mentality, uh, sometimes that takes people away from what it is that you're teaching, where Vimeo keeps them on your channel. And uh, so that's just a bit more professional. But Vimeo does cost money typically, uh, whereas YouTube's free. So a lot of trade offs. Again, I use both depending on how I'm mm -hmm. using it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Scott, this has been fabulous. Thank you so much for sharing your brilliance. Now, Thank you, Robin. I would... And this is a great example of how you can have glitches and you just show up as the real you and they go, that's, that's what happens to me every time I record. And they go, I my like gosh, my dogs, my dogs, they're crazy. <laughs> and they, they, I mean, I have to have the shades up, you know, because I like light and then they bark, bark, bark. Anyway, sorry about that. But what I wanted to, to say is thank you so much for sharing your brilliance. I truly appreciate it. I have one more question for you before we close out. And that is, how has your faith impacted your journey as an entrepreneur? As an entrepreneur, you know, that is a really great question. And that is a, that's a bigger question. <laughs> um, really, my faith is at the heart of everything that I do. And I, I want my life to be lived for a bigger purpose. And so I have been... In everything that I'm doing with my business things, I'm trying to impact other people's lives, but I'm trying to do it in cooperation, in, in co-creation with God. And I'm just so grateful that he's guided me along and he's taught me things like all these, all these things that I've learned along the way where I thought it was one way and he's showing me that it's another. And uh, anyway, I, um, I'll just tell you just real quick. So one thing that I have done that has helped my faith and helped me is I keep a hand of the Lord journal. Uh, each night when I get done with the day, I look back on the day and I say, okay, did I see God's hand in my life? Meaning, did I get an answer to prayer? Did I have a tender mercy, you know, a kindness um, shown to me? Or was there a crazy coincidence? And in doing these three things, you know, looking for these three things and pondering and, and thinking back on the day, um, meditating on the day and praying, saying, 
God, can you show me where your hand was in my life today? I have trained myself to see his hand. And it's been really remarkable to see that he is involved in our lives and is is just intimately involved in all the, like you see his fingerprints everywhere. Um, that has been one of the things that has kept me going because entrepreneurship is hard. <laughs> it's really challenging. And you have these pitfalls and all sorts of things. But knowing that he's there with me and that he cares has just been remarkable for me. So uh, anyway, that's something I've been doing. I love that. And it's funny. I call those coincidences God winks. Like, because inevitably he played a part in that, you know? Yeah. So I love that you mentioned that. Okay, thank you for sharing that. Now, how can the listeners connect with you, learn more about you, work with you, all that good stuff? Oh, best way to, is to just go to scottwilhite.com. My last name is spelled W-I-L-H-I-T-E, scottwilhite.com. And that's kind of the center for, you know, you can see some of my films there. You can see other courses that I have. And that's my hub. All right. Awesome. I will have that link in the show notes. Thank you so much for being here, Scott. I truly appreciate it. Thanks everyone for being here too. I truly appreciate everyone who stayed till the end and listened. I hope you found Scott's message, not only inspirational, but that you will take action on it and start creating great videos, but with simplicity, because that's what we're all about here is simplicity, ease and grace. If you found this information helpful, please do us a huge favor and leave us a rating or review because that is how more people will hear the message and get the help that they need to grow their businesses too. And then collectively, we can all create that ripple effect of good in the world. All right. I will see you all next week. Have a good one.